What is our place in the universe? What is the human race's fundamental identity? Is time to undo us all? Interstellar asks huge philosophical questions, but at its very core, it's undeniably human. Exploring with the grace of an adventurer, the ticking of time, and the quantifiable connection between us all. Hi guys, I'm Nick, and today, let's travel to the stars in Interstellar. If there is a true antagonist in the film Interstellar, it is the unending flow of time. We start the film at the near end of Earth's lifespan. Time has ravaged the Earth. However, once the astronauts leave, it becomes somewhat irrelevant in the ethereal nature of the universe. Yet to our lifespans, it is always ticking. As the endurance floats through the vast unending of space, its shape becomes apparent. It's a clock. A clock with 12 sections and a hand with our humanity huddled in the middle constantly ticking in the darkness. As Brand says, Time is relative, okay? It, it can stretch and it can squeeze, but it can't run backwards. It just can't. No, it... Time can squeeze and stretch, but we are inevitably trapped by its falling sand. Our very own vessel designed to be defiant of that ticking, humanity refusing to go gentle in the endurance. Hans Zimmer's brilliant score is also at many times composed at 60 beats per minute to remind us of this very fact. Dr. Man and all of his subtle symbolism is the perfect example for this. Humanity's best and brightest, left to fade away. Unable to accept that he was the one who must die and lose himself into eternity. I never really considered the possibility that my planet wasn't the one. Not afraid of death, but afraid of time. Thus it is he who blows the endurance up and sends time spiralling out of control. But in this moment, Zimmer's score sings into a religious symphony, the sound of faith in space. Thus at this second, it's humanity's time to prove its place in the universe, to fulfill our wish to never go gentle, to fight and push boundaries, because that is who we are as a species. The explorer Cooper, his love stretching miles backwards for his children, and the scientist Amelia, whose love stretches miles forward for Wolf, they together take on the mantle of our very identity as a race. <laughs> humanity must face time. At this point, it's possible Cooper transcends science, all known rules, and puts his faith, puts everything he has, in a force more powerful. A faith that Zimmer's score brings singing to life. For it may not be possible, but Cooper knows that for humanity, it's necessary. At this very moment, Interstellar begins to answer the question of who we are as a human race. We are not caretakers, we're not meant to look down in the dirt. We are pioneers, explorers, driven by an unexplainable mystical force. But what is this force that can conquer science itself? It's love. Love is the one thing that science cannot explain. Dr. Brand describes, love isn't something we invented. It's observable, powerful. It has to mean something. Love has meaning, yes. Social utility, social bonding, child rearing. We love people who have died. Where's the social utility in that? Cooper in this scene dismisses this, yet in reality, even faced with the blackness of space, with time ticking, Cooper is always drawn back to where his children are, to that watch in his daughter's bedroom. Interstellar shows that above all, humanity's defining feature is that bond that makes us challenge the ethereal, do the irrational, and defy all boundaries. When Cooper docks, he does it for his kids. That impossible love guides him, guides the human race, to save itself. This feeling guides us again, leading Amelia to our new home among the stars. This brings us to the crux of that idea, a father's watch, left behind in a daughter's bedroom. That watch is time. For Cooper, as he states, the watch will change as time changes for him, and for Murph, it'll always move forwards. But he gives her that watch, as his love, no matter what, will always be there. When Dr. Man attacks Cooper, what do we see? Do you see it, children? We feel that connection that fundamental humanity driving Cooper. Our survival instinct is what drives all of us, and it's what's gonna save us, because I wanna save all of us, for you, Cooper. 
It's this very ethereal connection that allows Cooper to literally transcend humanity's greatest foe. The Tesseract is a place of infinite space and time, yet a moment that is infinitely complex. A moment where science is exhausted, a moment that can only be found by a father. There was a ghost before Cooper left, something familiar. A feeling. My dad thought I called it a ghost because I was scared of it. I called it a ghost because it felt... felt like a person. Something reaching, reaching from the vastness of space, drawing itself back. Not an object, but a feeling. Cooper's connection to his daughter. For those great beings with all their access to time and space, all quantum physics, don't share a pivotal and unbreakable bond with that moment. Entering into the watch, not only quantum data, but a message. The watch is no longer governed by time, proving that love crosses all boundaries across space. For no matter where Cooper is, when he is, love will always bind him to that moment, to his Murph. Lastly, this leads us to Murphy. What struck me here is, why Murphy's Law? Murphy's Law states that anything can happen, will happen. Her name is the last key in the final puzzle of the film. Uh, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. Murphy represents the ultimate defiance in time, and an unstoppable human drive. At the start of the film, it seemed like an accident that the two found NASA. But in reality, it wasn't. It was Cooper, leading them straight to it, years and miles later. Yet it was also an accident that he was drawn into the Tesseract. But it wasn't, because he had to be there. It was his love for Murph in all of those moments, all of those accidents, were what drove him. Therefore, these little accidents were inevitable. Cooper's love literally reaching back through time. Thus when he says, I love you forever. You hear me? I love you forever. He really means it. He will love her forever. Thus, Murphy's Law is not anything that can will, but anything that will happen, can happen. Through love, Murphy allows Cooper to push everything and do what is impossible, because he'll do anything for his daughter. All of those accidents were caused by a law of a different kind. Faith in something higher. Faith in love. Faith in Murphy's Law. Thus, Interstellar defines who we are as a species. We're not meant to sit down here and look into the dirt, we're meant to look up at night, defy boundaries, to explore every star. Many have dismissed this film for its theme of love transcends all, but it's fascinating. Love cannot be explained by all of our best instruments. It drives us to do the unexplainable, the irrational, and even the impossible. For tell me, when you enter the vastness of space, what brings you back to Earth? What is the unexplainable force that you feel up among those endless stars? It's quantifiable, it's powerful, it's our very own identity in the cosmos. It's love. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I really enjoyed writing this one. It went through a bunch of rewrites and I'm finally happy with how it came out. If you enjoyed it, please share it. Thank you so much for watching again and that's me, Nick out.